Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. That prayer is the collect of the day, the prayer appointed for the day, for this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Dave Schwalis, one of our worship leaders, will lead that prayer later in today's service. And though we don't normally do it this way, I'd encourage you to pray it along with him when we get to that point in the service. Just say it together with him. Then pray it again and again this week. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. This is a wonderful way to start a prayer because it reminds us what the church really is. I love our building with all its beauty and with all its quirks. And I am glad that we are preparing, that we're planning to re-enter for public worship in a couple of weeks. But this prayer that we said today, that we'll say later, reminds us to keep the main thing the main thing. The church is the body of Christ, the gathered body of the faithful people built on the foundation of the teachings and example of the, of the apostles and of the prophets, with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. That is who we are. We are not a building as much as we love it. We, you and I, we are the church, together with the whole Christian family dispersed throughout the world. And because we have the teachings of the apostles, because we have the teachings of the prophets, and because we have Jesus Christ, our foundation, our cornerstone, our head, we have everything that we need. Now, with all that said, remembering who we are and remembering that Jesus is everything to us as Christians, I have to tell you that I had a moment this week in which I felt deep sadness and loss about our present situation and about our, our future life together. As you know, the staff and vestry have been working to get plans in place for our reopening. I was here on Thursday doing some of that, as was Cynthia, who is always here taking care of things. Ruth Cotton, our treasurer and the head of our altar guild, she was here getting ready, getting the sacristy ready for reopening. And then Terry, our organist, our pianist, came in to practice and to record for today's service. It all, it all felt great. We were making progress. We're getting ready for this Sunday and for future Sundays. The building was bustling, even though it was a social distanced, sort of bustling six feet apart, masks on. So it felt good. But then I was in the sanctuary doing something, I don't know what, when Terry started playing our opening hymn for today and one of the great hymns of the church, one, is con one that is connected to our prayer for the day. Christ is made the sure foundation, Christ the head and cornerstone. And as I heard the music, grief hit me like a ton of bricks. I was hit by a wave of grief because Terry was playing this beautiful, meaningful hymn, and I wasn't allowed to sing along because it wasn't safe. And I felt the sorrow in my gut. Because if you know me, you know that I love, love, love to sing. I sing in the shower, I sing to the baby, I sing in the car, I sing along when I'm editing our online services, much to Charles's dismay. I love to hum along 
when Terry and the choir are practicing on Sunday mornings. I hope I don't mess them up. I love most of all, though, to sing along with a congregation. There's nothing quite like it. Congregational singing is, is at the center of my soul's well-being. It helps me feel okay. And so I felt grief when Terry was playing and I couldn't sing along. And the grief surprised me because I'm so excited about regathering. I'm so excited to someday soon be able to get together back in our sanctuary around our altar and praise and worship God together and to break the bread of the Eucharist together. But that grief snuck in there because I know that things won't be the same for a long, long time. We will gather, but it will be fewer of us in one room. And some won't be able to gather at all because it still won't feel safe. When we gather, we'll be wearing masks. We'll be spread apart. We won't be singing. We won't have coffee hour where we can go straight from the worshiping to the socializing, maybe the gossiping. We will gather and it will be wonderful, but it will be different. And we don't know for how long. And so in the midst of the joy, there will be grief at what we are losing. For me, it's music and it's knowing that I won't be able to see all of you, a big crowd all together. For you, it may not be the singing. It may be sadness at not being able to kneel at the altar rail, not being able to serve as an acolyte, not being able to share an over the top coffee hour feast, not being, not being able to let your child run up to the table and color during worship. It may be joy at the church's reopening, but grief because you know that you'll still be at home because you don't feel safe joining us yet. I wish it weren't so. I wish I could wave a magic wand and make all this go away so that we could regather with nothing but joy. But that's not the world we're living in now. We're living in a world where even if we are insulated from the worst effects of the pandemic, we are still suffering losses. So we must prepare our hearts to embrace the ways that we can regather and to mourn the ways that we can't, because it is absolutely okay to mourn the loss of the things we love, even if those things seem small to other people. And we must continually prepare ourselves, our souls, our bodies, to set our hope on Jesus Christ, our head and our cornerstone, so that we can keep the main thing the main thing, so that we can keep the faith once delivered to the saints, taught to us by the apostles and prophets, so we can keep the faith alive here at St. Anne's. If we keep our focus on Jesus Christ, if we rely on his grace and follow in his footsteps, we will be joined together, as the prayer says, in unity of spirit. And we, we, not our building, but we, will become a holy temple acceptable to God. We will become a holy people, ready to be Christ to those among us. We will become the love of God manifest in this hurting world. Christ is made the sure foundation, friends, binding all the church in one. Let us give ourselves, give ourselves utterly to him so that even amid the changes and chances of this life, even amid the joys and losses of this life, we, St. Anne's, may be God's holy people. Amen and amen.